to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use the DNA Paints Mutant Crystals. I'm just going to be demonstrating on a few just blank test panels. Um, these panels, we actually use them on aircraft to blank out the windows when we we're doing resprays on them. So to start off, you put down your ground coat colour. You can choose any single colour you like. It's entirely up to you. It is custom paints and it stops with your imagination. So I've just put a few coats of silver over some of them to start off with. I've decided to put a couple of different candies over a couple of the panels as well, just for something different. Now, check out the application on this first one here. I don't use candies very often, but this is actually not the correct way to apply a candy. As you see me moving on, I'll actually remember how to paint these candies properly, and this is a bit more like what you want to be putting it on. Like you get it on nice and wet, you put it on too light, you'll end up seeing some patchy areas. So when I do the yellow one, I've got it down pat and get better results. With it. I did manage to sort of save this anyway. Um, I just put a couple more wet coats over the top of it. You can see the botchiness a little bit, for, but for the sake of what we're doing, it's going to be just fine. Um, and look, the way I say it, the best way of learning is by your own mistakes. So this blue candy I'm using here is called Sapphire Blue. It's as a concentrate, you may have noticed before. So what I had to do is mix the concentrated candy with the FX Intercoat myself. I just did it up by eye for the sake of doing this. I just put a touch in and then I just put a bit of the Intercoat in as well. I didn't even see it necessary to measure it out exact measurements because I'm never going to try and duplicate it anyway. I was able to eye up something that I was happy with and I did exactly the same thing with this yellow one and you'll be able to notice straight away that my technique is actually a lot better on this yellow one. Straight away there's no blotchiness so I just put the first coat on, let that tack off. Um, another thing I'll make a quick mention to when doing mutant crystals, you must use a solvent based base coat. I can't see any reason that would stop you from using any base coat on the market. You could use whatever brand you wish, but as long as it's solvent based. And you'll understand exactly why as we move on through the video and the process of how to use this stuff. So as you can see, I've done a few different ones. Um, a couple of those uh, blank panels, I actually left them in the aluminium, just bare aluminium, decided to see how that would look. Moving on, we're going to get these crystals on. So all you do, you just get those crystals. It's a liquid, you just put it straight into your mixing cup, you don't dilute it, you don't mix it with anything, it's just a straight product, and you use those chucks cloths. Those chucks cloths don't really leave any lint behind, so that's why they recommend it. So just make sure when you're applying the crystals that you get full coverage over the entire surface. If you miss a spot, well then it's just going to end up as a bit of paint that whatever colour you choose to put over the top, which is usually black, it'll just end up as a black spot because Basically what these things are doing is they're acting as a little piece of masking which you then spray over the top of and then remove so you'll actually be able to see through the pieces that have pulled out to the underneath colour. And I'll take you guys through that in a few minutes but I'll give you guys a look at it once we've applied it. Um, the amount that you put on is going to change the way it dries so if you put it on really thin um, you know if you squeeze that rag right out it's going to look different the temperature the humidity there's so many things that are going to change the way this stuff looks so you can see um, one of those pieces of bare aluminium I've decided to put it outside of the booth and see how that goes now it's a pretty cold day here it's probably about 19 or 20 degrees it turned out it wasn't even warm enough to dry these crystals out so what I decided to do I'll get my heat gun out and see if I could force dry them it ended up having a bit of an adverse effect. It made them, they cracked up too small. And if you guys hang around for a bit longer, you see exactly what it did. It doesn't look good at all. So what I ended up deciding to do was we'd do a bit of a comparison to force drying on one half of this yellow piece to preheated on the other section. So I'm just wiping over half of it, which is actually just removing all those old crystals. It's just, um, disintegrating them and then starting a game. So this is probably more to what you would like to do if you are working with these products in a colder environment. Look, my spray booth doesn't have heat on it. If my spray booth had heat in it, I think we'd have no worries at all. We'd get some really great results. But um, yeah, so temperature really makes a big difference. And you can see because it's preheated, it's actually starting to crack up. It actually looks really cool when it's starting to crack up. So this is me leaving them overnight. That piece there was the one that was outside of the spray booth. I've brought it back in now. With that little added extra humidity, 
from inside the spray booth from the water down there. Even though I did leave the door cracked open, it must have just been enough to stop it from mutating. But not to worry, what I ended up doing was just getting the heat gun and this time instead of what I did with the yellow one was probably get it a little bit too close. Um, I just held it back, I didn't have it too hot, I just um, nice and gently just blew a bit of air over it, hot air over it, and it was cracked up a little bit nicer. Another thing you want to be pretty careful of is getting big build ups in certain areas, like pooling up in certain areas, because it's going to make for a different effect as well. So I really think that the optimal temperature would be around 30 degrees. Um, I did do that office desk of mine, it was probably about 25 to 30 degrees. It really didn't take long to start mutating up and um, yeah I got, got much better results when it was that little bit warmer. So next up I'm going to be mixing the black up which is a pretty important stage. I'm just using the DuPont Centauri 6000. It's a nice full strength strong black. What you got to really do with this, don't underestimate, you really need it nice and thin. If you just mix it up to your normal 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratio, you've got to set yourself up to fail. See how quickly that, uh, that paint falls off that stick? I mean, it's thinner than a guide coat nearly. You, I mean, if I was to put a ratio on it, you'd probably say 80% thinners. Um, you still obviously need to get a bit of coverage, but that's why you need to use black. But I'll also show you what happens if you put too much on. Uh, you will fail. You won't be able to break through those crystals to remove them. Um, it was what I did at the training course the first time I used it and it didn't come up that good. But um, hey, it's all about learning and the best way to learn, as I say, is by your own mistakes. But if you guys can learn from my mistakes, well that's even better. So why do we have to use black as our second colour? There is a reason for it. The reason being that black has got the best coverage out of any colour. You can get coverage in one or two coats with this stuff. And if you were to use any other colour, you might say have to put three or four coats on. As soon as you start putting three or four coats on, that's when you're not able to break through the crystals and you'll get a bad result, as I was saying just before. So that's exactly what I'm doing on this one here. Basically, as much as anything, this video is a how not to as a how to, and that's pretty important. So there you go, way too much on that one. You're not gonna be able to break through. Have a look at this. So these two um, the candy ones, they're about where you want it, you know? Um, just those two medium coats, not too wet, not too light too light and you'll have no contrast with the black. This one's not enough and that was over the aluminium. That one's about right on half of it and that one's obviously got a gun drip in it. That's uh, not how you do it. So obviously you got to let your black dry out before you go and take the crystals off which is the next step. And what we're just going to do, we've just got that bucket of water. So you want to keep your piece of scotch bright, just grey coloured scotch bright. You want to keep it nice and clean. If it starts filling up with that base coat, it's not going to be working. It'll probably even end up scratching into it a little bit too much as well. So do a little bit, even flip it upside down and clean it out with the um, with the bucket of water there. That's just normal water, nothing special in there, just water. Um, and you can see straight away it's starting to come up with a pretty nice effect. I mean, the one on this side, it doesn't really look that good. There's sort of little fish eye type things in it, but um, you're seeing a lot more of the candy, whereas you can see on the other side. So it's a good example of, you can see I'll put exactly the same amount of black over that entire panel, but the way that they dried totally changed the effect that we ended up getting in the end. Um, I reckon it's really cool how it's just such a random effect. I mean, in, in a practical use, these are just test panels. I don't really care how they turn out. Um, I reckon it'd be great for something like motorbike helmet, motorbike tank. Um, really are limited by your imagination. There's nothing that stops you from putting this down, putting a coat of clear down to seal it down and then sand it back, do some airbrushing over the top of it, get crazy with some masking, or you could even do candies over the top of it. Um, look, just do some tests to you know see see what kind of results you can come up with i'm interested post some pics to my facebook page tag me in your instagram uh posts and stuff like that i'm always um keen to see what you guys come up with with these kind of products as well um as you can see on this blue one here because those panels aren't actually dead flat um they've got a few ripples and highs and lows in them those sections that are deeper blue 
is where it's pulled up and it's um, been a lot thicker. So I've also got another different effect through it. I, I do believe that if it had been a bit warmer, I would have got a totally different effect on that one too. But um, not to worry, they are just test panels. So the next step after you've scotch brighted them all down, you just get a nice clean cloth, wipe off the rest of the water and any sludge that's been left behind, and then you'd be putting a couple of coats of clear onto it. So this is those couple of panels that just really didn't work, um, as I said. so. That area there is where there's too much of a build up and this area here is where there's too much of the black and you can see it's really not, it's just not breaking through those crystals to, to remove them and give you that good effect. So epic fail on that one and same thing with those aluminium test panels. Basically what happened with the aluminium is that the base coat's not really strong enough to stick to the aluminium but I came up with an idea if you really wanted to go over bare aluminium with mutant crystals DNA do have a product called Key Clear, and I believe it's similar to an epoxy clear, so it's going to really bite into the alloys and stuff like that. So you'd put that clear down first, seal it down. You could then put your mutant crystals over the top of that clear, spray your black on, remove it, re clear it, and then you'd have a mutant crystal over alloy finish. So there you go, that's an idea. Something else, I, I can't see any reason why I couldn't do it over a piece of wood if you had some nice, uh, nice wood grain or something like that. You could then put some clear over that, put your crystals down, and then um, clear over the top of your crystals, and you'd have a pretty unique and cool looking effect, I believe, anyway. Next up, I'm just putting a couple of coats of clear on. I skipped out the waiting times, but just put one coat of 2K clear down. No need to wipe it down with wax and grease remover. From my experience, some of the wax and grease removers actually do remove base coat, and I reckon you're better off just giving it a good clean down, Obviously, you use a nice clean rag to wipe it down with after you had that water on it. Got your air duster gun and blew all that water off. Give it a good tack cloth down, make sure it's nice and clean. A couple of coats of clear, need be, you can sand that clear coat back down and flow coat it and you get yourself a really nice finish. But I've found that because you really don't get enough build up of the black to actually get any of an edge there that you need to actually flow coat it. So as long as you get that nice and clean, you should have something good just with the first couple of coats of clear. So there you go, a bit of a look outside. It's amazing the different effects that I've been able to get with, uh, especially that yellow one. And um, yeah, hope you guys have learned a few things. Make sure you hang around for a couple more minutes. I'll take you guys into my office and you'll be able to see my office desk, which again is another totally different effect. And I believe this office desk does actually look a lot better than any of these test panels. Um, I'll just end up sanding those test panels down and probably doing something else over the top of them in the future. But hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And to wrap it up, I've ended up getting my little shapes that I painted at the DNA course. And you guys can admire some of the other beautiful colours and some of the other ranges that DNA products have. They're a great company, good bunch of blokes down there, very helpful. Um, in the future, I'm pretty sure they're going to be expanding into Europe and all of America and stuff like that. So, all my European and American viewers, something to look forward for you guys, DNA paints. So, even just that uh, black over the white looks really nice. I like the orange as a base. That looks really cool. And um, there's some of their virtual chrome range and their shadow chromes and stuff like that. This is one of their hologram, holographics, holospecs or something like that, I think it's called. And even that blue one, I'm... I think really looks nice. So some of these ones are also candies over chrome and yeah there's so many different effects that you can get with these DNA paints. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for multiple videos every week. I put one up on Thursday and Sunday at midday Perth time and if I've been real busy and smashing the vids out then I'll put an extra one up on Tuesday for you guys. Next video I'll do on the DNA paints range is going to be the virtual chrome which again is a pretty specific procedure that you have to follow and if you don't you are set up to fail as well. Now you've watched this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.